one is James the Wine Guy. This beautiful fragrance I had. This is by Aqua di Parma. It's called Leather. Stay tuned for this review. Now this is my first video ever on a fragrance specifically. I've created my own channel for this because I don't want to do this on my wine channel for a lot of reasons and I think ultimately it's getting back to the heart of my matter which is I love fragrance. And I'm, Yes, is there some controversy about it? Not necessarily. I think a lot of people are up in arms when you go to a, you know, a trade tasting, a technical tasting and you have a scent on and that really is masking the characteristic of the wine. Do I do that? No, of course not. When I go to technical tasting, I don't wear any additional scent. I'll describe why that's important to them and I'll describe what that really means is every single day we walk out of the house, we have some fragrance on, whether we realize it or not, whether we intentionally put it on or not. It's in the shampoo, it's in the conditioner, it's in our moisturizer, lotion, and so forth. And ultimately, that's why we buy it. That's why we might find uh, to be more attractive in terms of what we are finding, uh, you know, that alluring quality to. So we find something alluring in terms of scent characterization. That's why soaps have a scent to them. That's why dishwashing detergent, that's why detergent has a, a certain characteristic as well as fabric softener and so forth. Is it really needed? No, not necessarily, not at all actually. And ultimately it comes down to that this is that scent cue that maybe something's clean or something is uh, you know completely uh, moistened, say as in a moisturizer or a lotion and it gives us that security and sense of it is done, that is accomplished. Ultimately, when I think of this whole world, a lot of people, I'm like, oh, so you didn't wear any lotion today or shampoo your, your hair when you go to a technical tasting? And the answer, of course, I did do that. Um, but I think it comes down to the heart of the matter is you can, like, if I want to feel special, if I want to go for a special dinner and it's not a technical tasting and it's with friends, I'll don some cologne because I really enjoy it. If it's the first of the week, I want to enjoy it, so I enjoy it every single day. It's something to you know really, really get down to the heart of the matter of really enjoying the uh, sensual characteristic of fragrance. It is an amazing art form, and I would say in the past 150 years or so, things have really had much more of an uptick in terms of positivity seen towards fragrance. People will refer back to the courts of Europe, the royal courts, and maybe you might have an orangery at a palace, a palais, uh, palace, etc., in Europe because that was some mask really bad smells. And the art form and George III commissioned, uh, you know, the English leather, which is a perfumer based in Paris today. They still create leather fragrances today. Ultimately, that's really important because, um, you know, even back then it was to mask bad smells. And somehow in popular culture, it's come to that accord of saying, oh yes, um, uh, this person's wearing this to mask that. And that's not really the case in my opinion because there's no perfume whatsoever that will ever mask any bad smell. Actually, the bad smells always win, always. And uh, just go to your dentist and you'll figure out the bad smells. I, I hate some dental work and uh, it makes me very, very uh, nauseous when I get it. Uh, but ultimately, I want to go to the positive. It's so easy to go to the negative side. Much more rewarding to talk about the positive. Very, very important to do because I think when we do that, we're really getting to a different census. This is an old art form. So we have Aqua di Parma. I love this fragrance so very much. It's one of my top favorites and uh, it's not the one I wear every day because it's super expensive, but it is really fantastically gorgeous. Love this uh, bottle uh, silhouette. I think it's really well done. I'll bring this a little closer so you can see uh, the, the label itself. Aqua di Parma leather. And I think this is a probably one of the most outstanding leather fragrances. There's, um, you know, leather has always been around at least since George III onward in terms of that characteristic of the glove he wanted to have scented in that very leather characteristic. I'm wearing suede because I love suede and I uh, did that intentionally for this video. Uh, but ultimately it's getting back to the heart of that matter which is talking about fragrance in a way that is really uplifting it. You go three, 4,000 years ago, you're gonna find the Babylonians. So there was a noted perfumer during that time. You have a period of time where there was a uh, fragrance laboratory in Cyprus about 3,000 years ago. It's mentioned in the Ayurvedic texts. It's part of the Islamic culture. Uh, there's cultures in the Middle East who really enjoy oud uh, just to burn and smell and even get on applied to their clothing and so forth. The word perfume is a French word, a middle French word meaning by, per, 
and fume, meaning by smoke. And ultimately, when you think of things like this, this is a beautiful concentration, and that's done through distillation, which when you think of the beverage art forms, what, what's that? Scotch, gin, and, and vodka, and tequila, and so forth. That's really a baseline there. And ultimately, it comes down to there are so many different ways of looking at fragrance today that we can look past some of the bad reasons that existed. And, uh, you know, I also look in the Middle Ages, while there wasn't really a perfume culture uh, during the Christian era, you can look back in, the, in uh, Christ the Child, who receives gifts of, of course, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So why does the Christ Child get this? Well, simply because all kings of that period would have gotten these gifts or similar gifts. It's that the healing quality is that the frankincense and myrrh really went a long way in terms of getting those bona fides of health characterization. So as a young boy, I would go to my aunt's stone fruit orchard, and in the fall time in particular, you'd find stone fruit would fall from the tree to the earth that were not picked, and it would melt with the earth. And if it was a slightly cool day, uh, the scent characterization, or even a slightly warmer day, that scent would come forward. It's actually a characterization of what I call the accords of leather and suede and cardamom and a bit of uh, clove and so many beautiful uh, characterization, even sandalwood. And there's that even autumnal note, uplifting for me and something I look back in a positive childhood memory. Also, I look back in terms of how do I look at this in terms of wine. I use a lot of these terms that are used in the, uh, say, the word leather. I use that often when I describe, say, a Cabernet or maybe I'm describing a Syrah or a different red wine characterization. And it really fits in quite well. And I think it's really a fantastic way of thinking about this. So let's talk about this. Now I'm gonna give a, so I have a 100 point scoring system. The 100 points are really perfect, which I will probably never give. I've never done that for any of my wine reviews. I would definitely say I'm gonna give some really high numbers for my first few fragrances because they're absolute favorites of mine and they just have some amazing capabilities. This is a 97 point um, out of 100 points. So it's really, really, you know, if you want to look at it in terms of a grading system, it's an A+. It is something that is really outstanding. And if you really like these leather accords or you like these uh, gorgeous notes of wood, they do such a fantastic job. I was in Milan, I'll put that picture right here. And uh, I was really glad to visit Acqua di Parma in, um, in Milano. And I think this is a really great uh, way of thinking in terms of the often an overused word of alchemy. So a, a perfumer, a well-experienced and a successful perfumer is somebody who is, uh, you know, making something that is true, truly an alchemy, an art, and something that you look at the sum of the materials composed, it becomes something else and something that is not easily replicated. That's the heart of the matter. That's the exciting thing. So I do know the materials on this and I only know some of them because I don't think they list every one of these. So what Aqua de Parma says is that this is Brazilian orange. It's also Sicilian lime, which to me is really the heart of what Aqua de Parma is. So if you go through all their fragrances, they have a lot of that uh, beautiful baseline of those uh, citrus notes and being in Italy last year for at least two months. I was, you know, enveloped with these amazing citrus notes and uh, buying them just for the smell. Fantastically beautiful. Additional material is rose. Uh, so there's Paraguayan petite grain, leather cord with Atlas cedar, as well as uh, Paraguayan guiac. So there's a lot of really cool exotic materials in this. And I will say this is that the silage, now the silage means how long is it uh, perceived by someone else? And it's actually really, really nice on this. Some people, I've read reviews where people complaining about that. I really don't because at least my body chemistry, put it on skin, don't put it on clothes. Although if some gets on there, that's okay. Um, I really want it to become part of my chemistry. I want my chemistry to interact with the fragrance. And uh, a lot of my chemistry, I guess it just soaks up all the fragrance that it gets and doesn't give anything out. Uh, it does to a degree, but it really doesn't have a, a really outstanding silage. This one does. I'd say the silage on this is between four and six hours. That's really, I think, a fantastic, healthy fragrance characteristic and uh, something that lasts for 24 hours would be a bit too long and to me would describe something that has um, maybe really artificial materials. 
and materials that are designed to smell like something but aren't really that material. This one really is that bonafide, fantastic, high quality, rare material and our materials, plural. Now notes on this are that sanded exotic cedar. So when you heat a wood up, I remember as a child, I had to take wood chop and I actually kind of hated it in a way, but then there was that smell that came from uh, the sanded cedars or just the sanding of woods. They weren't rare woods by any stretch of the imagination, but they smelled so fantastic. I think sandalwood is in this because it is really uh, alluring and it just has a depth and characteristic that's absolutely beautiful. Dried uh, wood is also on this uh, characterization as well as leather into suede, which I'm wearing because it just definitely reminds me of suede characterization, moist forest floor. So if you've been in a forest, um, maybe during the heart of winter, uh, especially in the Mediterranean climates, uh, it actually has this really beautiful green characteristic, but it's also very wooded characteristic black pepper bark. Um, so as a child, I, I harken back to childhood because it has some great experience with materials. Also getting to, um, it, my mother had a beautiful rose garden facing west. So in that western exposure, and especially in the late afternoon, there was a scent characterization that came from the heat of that afternoon. And though I wouldn't water the garden at that point, I would just sprinkle a little bit of water on there to get some of that scent of the bark. And also that I'd spray the flower itself so I can get some of that characteristic, especially the dark red roses. I want to get to the heart of the matter and the heart of that red rose because it is really enveloping, beautiful, gorgeous. So I'm getting bergamot notes on this. Uh, additional notes are citron, ground clove, cardamom, ozone. Ozone's important for me because it envelops other characteristics. It's also a fresh capturing of material and scent characterization. Dark tea, myrrh, of course. Uh, warm mineral, especially if you have rocks in my geology. I loved it because you, you have to really experience the rocks or the minerals and there was that smell that would come after. It was so beautiful. Love that. Uh, additional notes of peat and underbrush. I think this describes for me what I'm getting from this because I love materials and I love to smell. Of course, those positive materials, right? Um, but I think this is really an enveloping, beautiful, gorgeous um, fragrance that Aqua di Parma does and it's so successful and something that I just, I, I really will cry when I finish the bottle, which it will be someday because I believe you have to finish your wine and, and you know, I know people just let it age forever. Like wine, fragrance does not last forever. You want beauty and I want to, to just enjoy it and I don't want it when it's old and it's really warm past its time or gone south for that matter. It can happen, it does happen to some fragrances, not all. Uh, but for me, and of course the alcohol does help to keep that in place. It's really beautiful. So I think you're going to find this readily available in a lot of stores in the United States and around the world. Do yourself a favor, go for this. And um, they do have all the other uh, Colonia fragrances. For me, this is the most compelling and beautiful. I hope you think so too. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more reviews to come. I really appreciate it. So give a like to this channel and subscribe to this channel and I'll be posting these videos as well. And so your support, your like and subscription really goes a long way and more videos to come. Thank you for watching today. Sante.